In the last video, I showed this PCB that I've ordered up, and this is my 640 by 480 by two bytes of color data per pixel video card. And this is still maybe in the, I'll call it in the prototyping stages. I still have these P socks off to the left. Eventually, I'd like to take those P socks out and uh, either run separate discrete ICs that do the logic instead of those PSOCs, or maybe I could use a couple of PLDs, uh, or use the PSOCs, but just simply use the PSOC itself and not the entire uh, CY8C kit, which is uh, basically a little breadboardable version of the PSOC. I did look and I cannot find any availability of inventory for those PSOCs, the chips themselves, or the kit at the moment. So they, they are pretty much impossible to find without spending 10 to 20 times what they actually should be selling for. So I'm going to come, come back to that another day. I'll see if inventory on those PSOCs frees up at some point and then I'll come back and revisit that. So for now, I'm going to continue to use these little uh, breadboardable P socks on my video card. Also had some good chatter about uh, updates to the PCB design and the routing here. You know, in, in this card that you're seeing here, I did use an out, auto router, kind of laid out the chips that I thought uh, in a way that made sense, and then used the out, auto router to uh, actually get the routing done. In the next version, I think I'll I'll give it a shot. I'm not going to say I'll be successful, but I'll give it a shot trying to route this all manually. Uh, minimally, it'll be a good experience, and we'll see if I can be successful with that or not. But I've got a couple other things on my wish list when it comes to video cards. The goal of this video card was to see if I could come up with basically a, a video card that could allow both video output and memory access from the 286 simultaneously. And that was accomplished through a basically two sets or two frames one frame of memory for the 286, one frame of memory for the VGA output, and then I could swap them. And so far that seems to be working out uh, quite well and I'm, I'm happy with that. But one of the enhancements I'd like to make is I'd like to have the VGA output use either frame regardless of which frame the 286 is using. Uh, now previously in my 320 by 240 video card I did that with dual port memory and it was expensive dual port memory. It was a basically a parallel in, parallel out. Basically both sides were parallel and um, it was expensive to, to buy that RAM. I have recently sourced some alternate RAM that might give me some, some different options here. So that's what I'd like to kind of talk through next is what might that look like. And it's gonna get me into some new territory and I'll probably uh, be looking for some help from, from folks uh, as I get into this. Uh, so let me uh, go back to this graphic. You know, my current video card, the, the whole concept is that the, the 286 can take access of one of the frames and the VGA output will use the other frame. And I'm using just plain old static RAM. Nothing uh, too uh, crazy here. This is just a standard, this is a, for me it's a pretty standard part I use of this AS6C4008. And it's a 512K by one byte uh, static RAM. And that works great. I did get my hands on some different memory though that I'm wondering if it would be a nice fit for what I'm trying to do here. And that memory is this here. It's an NEC. It is a dual port memory, but it's not the same as the previous type of memory I've been using that was a dual port. Previously I was using this. Both the left and the right side were accessed through parallel. Uh, this is basically a a parallel and then a serial out. So it's a parallel for, for the 286 side of things and it'd be a serial out for the VGA. And it is a 256K and if I back up, you know, this was a 512K. So I would need twice as many of these chips, which might be fine. I, I have uh, plenty to do that. But the one nice thing about these is they are a much smaller package. So I can realistically can probably still fit this in the same footprint as my current video card, even with double the number of chips for the memory. Now one of these chips is comparable, comparable to the price of one of these chips, but I need twice as many. So that does mean that as I get into the NEC, if I am gonna pull this off and try to use this dual port graphics buffer that you're seeing here, 
I will need eight of those and they are about five dollars each five US dollars each so that's about forty dollars in memory and I'm fine with that compared to the previous dual port memory uh, that is a fraction a very small fraction of the cost of those others and forty dollars I can I can accept that as being quasi reasonable here uh, so if I look at this uh, PD482234 a little bit. Here you can see what the pinout looks like off to the right. In the middle you got a quick uh, list of descriptions for those pins. And as I'm reading up on this it seems like there's a bit more complexity. Uh, stuff that I've not worked with is dynamic RAM or DRAM before. Uh, so this whole CAS and RAS and things like that. I, I need to understand how to work with those signals, how to get that appropriate timing so the right addressing and data are coming in. And the serial output seems maybe more straightforward, but that's all stuff I've got to figure out. I did produce these little PCBs that will let me take some of those memory ICs and put them into a breadboardable format. So I think I could take four of those, put them into these adapters, and then on my breadboard VGA, pull out my existing static RAMs and or a pair of them and put in for these uh, instead that won't quite fit in my breadboards perfectly but i think i can figure out how to set some breadboards off to the side and try to do some testing to see if i can make these work as i'm researching this a little bit this is on the left the data sheet from nec and it talks about you know what the block diagram looks like and i need to figure out how to get uh, ras and cas signals and this whole refresh of DRAM is not something I've done before, so I have to figure out, okay, how do I, how do I work through that with these, these memory chips? The graphic to the right is from the 8286 hardware reference manual, and, and it shows a 286 connecting to a dynamic RAM off to the right, and they're using this 82C08, uh, basically advanced dynamic RAM controller, I believe is the title of it. So if I dig into that, maybe as an option, that means I need to source some of these 82 CO8s, and I have ordered up a couple of those, and it looks like uh, one of those will support a 64K and 256K DRAMs, and so in my case, I think I could possibly use that to control my 256K DRAMs, and so in my case, I'm going to need eight of them, so 256K by four and two sets of that. So that's maybe something that could work here. And uh, in that data sheet for that DRAM controller off to the right then, you know, here's again the pinout. Uh, I did order up the DIP version, so I'll work with the DIP version. And then it kind of shows the really the block diagram here if you want to take a look at that. So I think I'm going to try to dig into this. I could definitely use any pointers. If any of you have done uh, a bunch of work with DRAM and, and the, the CAS and RAS and refreshing and all that and have some good pointers to send me to, that would be a good place for me to start and learn how to draw up a circuit like this. Or if you have a sample circuit that maybe is along the lines of what I'm trying to do, so the 286 will connect to the basically this DRAM controller, and then I'll connect to the DRAM itself uh, through basically a parallel type of interface. And then on the output, I'll do a serial read from the VGA, and that allows the VGA to run at its speed, it lets the 286 run at its speed. Both can be using that memory simultaneously. And the benefit of that then is going to get me to now I can have the 286 access either frame and the VGA out access either frame. I can still swap back and forth frames on the VGA out and sync that to VSync. But if I don't want to wait for a VSync and I want to just update the, the VGA out frame that's live, I could do that. And previously with my dual port RAM, I was doing that and I really never noticed any issues with that. And for what I've been doing on the 286, that was really convenient that I could just be writing characters to the screen and instantly see it and not worry about flipping frames and things like that. But then when I get to animated content, I want to be able to flip frames back and forth because that, that's a nice feature set. So I'm thinking if I can take my current card for 640 by 480, 
make a version of it that supports this dual port parallel plus serial DRAM, I then should be able to update my logic pretty easily to let the 286 access either frame and let the VGA access either frame and really let them do their independent thing or control it uh, based on a VSync swap and have that benefit too. And that all should be pretty controllable through a register and basic logic that I've pretty much uh, mostly have laid out already. So that's something I want to try to dig into. Uh, like I said, if any of you have experience, recommendations, thoughts on any of this, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to get in and, and just start trying to uh, read through the data sheet, uh, read through the hardware design guide from Intel, see if I can piece together what this might start to look like in my schematic, and post some updates, maybe uh, another video on, on what I think that, that circuit might start to look like with those updates. I do know on my 286 system, I'm going to have to tap into the internal bus, the internal address bus for sure, for this memory controller here, the 82C08. And if I uh, maybe back up one more slide, you know, you're seeing here the 286, and then here's the, the 82C08, but they're pulling the address line direct, not the latched address line. So I would need to pull that. And I've got a header on my, my 286 board, so that's not a problem. I can plug into the header for that. You know, most of the rest of this doesn't look like it's going to be a big deal. And this does look like it will give me my RAS and CAS signals and the addressing coming out of that. And then the data is just going to plug into the data bus. And then on the other side of these chips would go up to my, my VGA output, I believe. Uh, so that's that's the set of assumptions I'm going with based on my limited cursory review of this uh, so far. But definitely looking for for any guidance for those that have have experience with this. More to come, and we'll see if I can configure this out. Uh, it should be a, a fun challenge for me.